What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. This week things are getting a little bit dark and we're going back to the medieval times to do this old guillotine. Let's just get started. Alright, so to start things off I'm going to select a cube and start blocking out the main shapes. Now lucky for me this model seems like majority of it is going to be a bunch of rectangles, so it should be pretty straightforward, but I'm not going to rush this part, I just want to make sure I get all those proportions somewhat accurate and figure out how all those shapes fit together. Now I'm not going off of any dimensions or schematics or anything, I'm just going off of a few Google images that I found online. So I'm going to let this next part play a little bit as I start figuring out the shapes and start scaling things to get them into place. So for this next part, I'm just going to focus working on that left beam and then I can just copy that over and to the right side rather than working on both of these poles together. Since I don't exactly know how these objects work, it's just going to make my life a little bit easier focusing on one side and then I can just mirror it to the other once I'm done. So I'm just going to start adding a few edge loops and deleting some of these faces just to figure out how I can get this piece of wood that basically slides over the person's head to fit inside of this beam. 
So here I'm just going to select a cube and start blocking out that piece of metal that basically is bolted onto this front piece of this beam. Now it's going to help that wood actually fit in there and like I said I don't actually know how this works so it's a little bit of problem solving. I find the models will look a lot more realistic if it looks like they work accurately rather than just shoving a piece of wood in between these beams and not really worrying about how they would actually fit there. So if you take a little bit of extra time to make sure these objects look like they work properly, you'll probably realize that your models will look a little bit more realistic in those final renders. So next up is creating a sphere just so I can create those metal bolts. So that's as simple as chopping this in half, scaling it to squishing it nice and small, and then just fitting it right onto my piece of metal. Now I'm just going to select this object and mirror it over to the other side. I'm probably going to delete this and actually come back to make some more edits, but it's just going to help me visualize the object to make sure that proportionally it looks accurate. And then I can select another cube and start building out that middle piece that actually fits into these metal slots that we build. Alright, so next up is creating another cylinder just so I can boolean out a nice hole where that person's head's gonna fit into. And now I'm gonna go ahead with the target well tool and start connecting all of these vertices. Now I'm not gonna delete those two edges that the boolean automatically created for me. Sometimes that will just delete this hole and cause just a lot of mess. So I'm gonna leave those temporarily until all of those vertices are attached. And then I can go select those edges and delete them. All right, so things are slowly coming together. Now it's time to zoom out a little bit and start scaling some of these sizes to fit a little bit better with the model. I'm also gonna add in a few objects just to start blocking out the remaining shapes. Alright, so now that things are looking a little bit more proportionally accurate, it's time to move on to the next boolean. So I'm going to go ahead and select another low poly cylinder and position it in that top piece of wood where I want that hole to go. I basically want a string that's attached to this blade that's going to come through that top piece of wood and wrap around to the side to a little pulley. Now before I boolean out a hole, I'm just going to select these top faces, delete them, so I can create a nice little indent where I want that piece of string to fit. Alright, so next up is creating a few edge loops and I'm going to fit nice and close to that hole where I'm going to create that boolean. It's just going to help me afterwards when I create that boolean just to connect some of those vertices. So like I mentioned earlier, it's probably a good idea to make sure this object looks like it works properly. So right now, there's no grooves on the side so this blade would be just floating in between these two pieces of wood. So I'm assuming this beam would have some sort of indent or a groove so then this blade could kind of fit inside of it. So I'm going to spend the next little bit just adding a few edge loops and deleting some faces so I can extrude an area in on this beam so this blade has a place to sit.
the more I stared at this model as I worked on it, the more I started to kind of figure out exactly how it worked. Now, I think that there would be some sort of divider between the blade and that piece of wood that goes over the person's head. This piece of wood right now, it would probably fall backwards because it's not leaning on anything since it only has the metal supports on the front. So I'm gonna start off with a square and start building out that divider that sits right between the blade and that little piece of wood that goes over the person's head. This whole model probably would have gone much quicker if I planned it out ahead of time. This is just the process of me figuring it out along the way. I think it's helpful to see the process so it doesn't look like it always goes smoothly. As you can see, I've spent the last little bit just working on this beam and trying to figure it out. So sometimes it just takes a little bit longer to figure out exactly how things work, but just take your time and it will slowly come together. All right, so since we made those little indents on the sides of the beams where the blade would fit into, I have to now create a little extrusion onto that blade itself. So I'm gonna select that piece of wood that holds the blade, create a few edge loops so I can select those side faces and extrude them outwards. That way it'll just create a little extrusion that can fit into that groove we made. Alright, so things are slowly coming together, now it's time to separate those two pieces of wood that actually go over the person's head. So I'm going to select this object, highlight those top faces, and extract them. That way it just separates those faces from the object, so now I have two pieces of geometry. Alright, so now that those are separated, I can come back to finish working on that part later. I just want to block out the remaining objects on my model. So next up is working on those metal beams that actually help support the guillotine. So the model was looking a little bit short, so I just decided to select some of these objects just so I can raise them up a little bit. And starting off with another cube, I can finish blocking out the remaining wood objects.
So now that all the main objects are finished, I can move on to the smaller things like that side pulley. So I'm going to go ahead and select another cube and I can start blocking out those objects. Alright, so now that all the main objects are in scene, it's time to work on all the other little things. So, on one of my references, I saw that they had a nice boolean on those bottom wood panels, and it looked really cool, and it just basically made the object a little bit more interesting to look at, so I thought I would do the same. So I'm going to go ahead and select the cylinder, and I'm going to chop that in half and just drag it to the roughly the size that I'm looking for so I can bridge them back together. That way, now I have a long cylinder that I can boolean out a nice hole into those bottom wooden planks. Alright, so now that the boolean is done, it's time to start beveling some of these edges. So I'm going to spend the next little bit just resizing a few of these objects and adding some bevels to all of these edges on my model.
All right, so things are looking good. Next up is just creating that piece of rope that actually pulls my blade up and down. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a torus and chop that in half and scale it nice and small, just so I have a little piece that my string or my rope can be attached to. And then for the rope itself, I'm gonna do that with a curve tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and create an EP curve tool and just start basically putting it into that position of the rope that I wanna create. That way afterwards, I can scale that a little bit smaller and fit it nice and snug around my model. And then just editing those verts, I can smooth those around to get those into the final positions that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna speed up this next little part as I'm just moving all these verts around to get it into the shape that I was looking for. So for this next part, I'm just going to go ahead and delete some of these verts. You can spend some time actually wrapping this around and you can make it look really good, but I didn't have a lot of time left in my day and just to make my life a little bit easier, I thought I would kind of cheat and add some tauruses later so I can just kind of fit them nice and small and snug around my rope and it can kind of blend in and it would look like the rope's actually wrapping around. So that's why I removed some of those verts just to make my life a little bit easier. So like I just mentioned, I can go ahead and create some toruses and scale them really small just to fit right in the area where my rope connects with that piece of metal. That way it just looks like the rope is actually wrapping around and this torus can act as if it was a piece of that rope. All it takes is just scaling it really small and putting it into the right position and it starts to look like it actually is part of the rope. And that's basically everything for the modeling. So I went ahead and just continued to bevel a few of these edges, but this is basically everything. I went ahead and just made two textures for this. So the first one was the whole bottom part and the other texture just being the top, nice and easy, just separated those into two. 
Um, but yeah, that's everything. So next up is jumping into Substance Painters so we can start applying those textures. Alright, so now in Substance Painter, I can go ahead and load in my FBX from Maya. And give it a quick look and things are looking good. So I can go to my texture set settings, scroll down to bake mesh maps where I can bake out my textures. So choose your output size, I chose 4K, and then make sure to check that use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. And then you can go ahead and bake selected textures. Alright, so now starting off with my texture one, I can go ahead and select one of these materials and start applying it to my meshes. I went ahead and found this heavy painted wood material on Substance Source on their website. So I just downloaded that and dragged it right into my Substance Library. You can do the same, they're free and you can add it into your own project. I just found this material looked really good, especially with medieval wood, it's not the cleanest thing in the world, but also not entirely abandoned, so I just found it was somewhat fitting. All I had to do was just tweak some of those settings and colors to find exactly the look I was going for. And once I was finally happy with the color, I could right click, set it to a black mask, and then apply it to my meshes. Now I did notice when this material is applied to everything in this texture one, how that wood piece of panel, the how I guess is oriented on my UV map, the grains were actually going horizontally and not vertically or the same direction as all the other ones. So I'm not going to apply it to that middle piece, basically all I would have to do is just duplicate this material change the orientation of that material and then reassign it to that middle panel so all those wood grains are going in the exact same direction. And then next up was the metal, so that steel ruin was pretty fitting for this model, so I'm just going to select that, right click, set it to a black mask, and then apply it to those metal meshes.
So things are looking good, but I feel like the wood would have a little bit more wear on it, especially around those edges. So there's a couple of ways I could do this by just adding like an edge mask and just changing the color. But I find a fun and easy way of doing it is just selecting another material. So in this case, I just chose a rotten wood texture and then I could supply that to my meshes. But by setting that as a black mask and then choosing a different brush, so in this case I just chose a dirt brush, I can go ahead and paint on that material wherever I'd like it. So I'm going to go ahead and just paint it on all the edges and corners of my models. And the more you do this with different brushes, the more realistic it's going to look and it's going to make your model look like it has some really nice edge wear to it. Alright, so things are looking good, it's time to move on to texture 2. So I'm going to go ahead and select these wood materials that I already created on this texture, just so I can copy those over to my other one, just to make my life a little bit easier and to keep those wood textures consistent. Like most of the time, once you actually unhide all your objects and you're looking at everything in your scene, it, you sometimes want to make adjustments to those textures you were just working on. So I'm going to just jump back and make a few adjustments to that first texture I made. Alright, so now jumping back to texture 2, I originally didn't apply that wood material to that top beam just because the wood fibers were looking a little bit larger and that's probably because it's a little bit larger on my UV map. So just a quick way of fixing that would be just copying over that same wood material, reapplying it to that top beam and then I can scale it a little bit smaller. And also reapplying that steel ruin texture to the other metal objects. Now for this middle piece of wood that's actually holding that blade, I wanted to do a different wood texture. I thought it would look a little bit more interesting to the eye if all the wood wasn't consistent throughout the whole model. So I'm going to go ahead and just select another rotten wood material and then apply that to that middle block.
same thing with the other metal that's below. I thought it'd be a little bit more interesting to the eye if I added another metal material. So instead of just going with the steel ruin for everything, I'm gonna choose another iron material and apply it to those meshes. Same thing with this large metal blade, I want to add a different metal material to it so it just stands out a little bit more. Alright, so now that majority of the materials are applied to the model, it's time to move on to the blood. So I'm going to start off with a plasty glossy material. I can go ahead and tweak some of those colors and settings afterwards, but it's just a good base to start off with because it's already shiny like blood. And I'm going to go ahead and just switch my alpha, so I'm going to start off with a dripping effect and start just pasting on that texture right onto my mesh. Now I think it's important to think about where your source of blood is actually coming from. Because it's a guillotine and it's just chopping off heads, the source of blood would be at the bottom and probably be spraying upwards. So, so the reason I'm starting off with a dripping effect would just be because I want those streaks to be vertically on my blade. Just because the head's kind of sitting below and as that blade comes down it would probably create some blood streaks that are going vertically. So I just think it's important to think about where your source of blood's coming from. I know it may be gross to think about, but it's just going to add a little bit more realism to your model when you're looking at that final render. So as I'm applying this blood to my mesh, I'm just trying to keep that in the back of my mind, thinking about exactly where those squirts and sprays would be coming from. So I'm going to let the next little bit play out as all I'm doing is just applying more blood to my model.
So a really cool way that you can actually apply your blood is with a particle brush. So if you go to your brushes tab and scroll down, you can find that there's different particle brushes you can use. Now in this case, it was a heavy leak one I chose. There's different leak effects, but in this case, it was just a heavy leak effect. And I can go ahead and just click on my model and it will just act like the particles actually falling. And I find this is a really good way to actually add different effects to your models and to your textures. And it's something I don't do enough that I'm going to try to do more of going forward. But it's just something I recommend that you can use and I used it on this model and it tends to look pretty good.
right, so the blood's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna go ahead and just like I did to the first texture, I'm gonna add some nice edge wear to my wood pieces on my second material. So the exact same process, I'm just gonna add a lighter wood texture and change up my brush to like a nice dirt brush. And I can start just painting on that lighter wood texture around all that corners and edges of my model where I think they'll be a little bit more wear. are coming together now I'm just gonna jump into the renderer to see how things are looking I think it's important to remember to jump into the renderer just to see how the materials and colors are looking and in most cases you tend to have to jump back and make a few adjustments so that's exactly what I'm gonna do I'm gonna spend the next little bit just tweaking a few of my colors and settings So as I was taking a look at these renders, I actually noticed something I missed. So there's these little metal poles that actually help hold the guillotine together. And I actually forgot to model those. So I'm quickly jump back into Maya, just create some cylinders and fit them right there between those poles. And then I can just apply those to my second texture map and just fit them somewhere on my texture. 
and then I can just re-export that model, go into my edit project configuration. I can just select that new model and it just loads my new mesh. So here is my new loaded FBX model from Maya. And all I have to do is just rebake that texture map just because I added new geometry to it. So I'm just gonna let this go, bake those new textures, and then I'm ready to go. So all I have to do is just apply a new material. I'm just gonna select the steel ruin that's already applied to my other meshes and apply it to those new cylinders. And then just paint on a little bit of blood just to match the other objects that are around it in the scene. And that's basically everything guys. That's the whole modeling and texturing process that I did to create this old medieval guillotine. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one.